Hey guys, Artosis here, bringing you game number two of the winner's match in Group A of the BSL Season 15 Asian Championships. We have Jedi losing game number one against John Hun. A very excellent counterattack from John Hun when Jedi was trying to break into his third base, and then John Hun even held his own third base, did some pretty massive damage, killed off a decent chunk of drones when Jedi was already kind of drone low for that point in the game. Uh, but yeah, definitely a, a very cool one. I enjoyed it. Hope you guys did as well. Uh, and yeah, here here we go into game number two. Obviously, if John Hun wins, he goes directly to that bracket stage. The first player from the Asian region to get there. Of course, uh, I did mention the format before. It's like GSL groups, four GSL style groups. Uh, you know, which means the top two go onto the brackets, and then in those brackets. Uh, you know, the top four players overall will go on to meet the top four of Europe, the top four of North America, and the top four of Latin America as well. So, very, very exciting stuff. Hope that you guys are enjoying. And uh, it looks like we have first a nine pool here from Jedi. Okay, okay. Let's see what he gets on nine pool. And an extractor trick. Yeah, nine pool gas would be insane. Uh, and it's a gateway expansion here from, from John Hun. Probe going out. The Overlord. We'll see if this turns before Jean Hun sees. All right, he's gonna he's gonna see it. Overlord has much better vision than a warping in gateway. Is he actually gonna fly the Overlord right in? You gotta turn it around. He flies it right in. Huh. Okay. Well, I mean, I guess you can. I don't know why you would fly. I feel like you should turn it around and put it over here and just watch Zealots walk out. I guess you can go in and, like, check pylon counts or something, but honestly, just watching the natural is good. Uh, but that also obviously tells Jean Hun where his opponent's at. The probe makes a beeline across the map. Otherwise, it would have been a little bit slower going to the top left and then the bottom right, left. Uh, so I, th I think that was a bit of a mistake there from Jedi to let that be seen immediately. But here we go. The nine pool is moving forward. The first zealot pops out. He's going to have to bring... Yeah, he already has a probe up here. Now, against builds like this... Okay, it looks like he may try to just hold here. He has to bring more probes, though. Brings one more. I think you actually... I think two is not quite enough here. Uh, we'll see, though. We'll see. Gets on top of that zealot immediately. Yeah, goes after the first probe. Walks right by. Oh, God. Oh, the second Zal pops on. They actually flank one of those lings. Okay, one probe dead. Oh, good micro from John Hoon. Saves with two health left. Very damaged Zerglings at the moment. Now, is John Hoon just going to make the Nexus? Yes, he is. Three Zerglings in the main base, though, is going to be highly annoying. See how long Jedi can keep those up. More lings being made and rallied over while he does take his expansion. Another drone is up here, so he's getting ready to take his third base at this location. Borlings coming over. There's actually no cannon. He brings these back up, which is a very common move to jump on a cannon while you attack the front. But with no cannon there, nothing to jump upon. Trying to get around one of these zealots. A lot of probes having to come up now. Maybe a little bit greedy from John Hun to not get a cannon up as of yet. The lings, though. Wow, Jedi decides to just leave. And you know what? That's probably the correct decision. Gladiator is a little bit tight here, and we saw a lot of probes in this area, so he wasn't going to get through there. And even if he tries to circle around, the probes can kind of block the ramp because they're already in this area, so it's not very far move distance for them to get there. And if you end up losing all these lings, that's pretty annoying. It's not like Jedi has a great economy right now. He did go for a nine pool. So that was... You normally don't see a Zerg pullback like that. But I'm not... Yeah, I'm not going to say it was a bad thing. I, I think... Yeah. <laughs> I, I, th I think it wasn't that bad. Like, if he loses them trying to get back in, you suddenly look really, really dumb. Uh, because then you have, like, six less lings, and your opponent has four zealots already, and you're going to be in some trouble. Jean Hin here, being what I would call, like, a little bit greedy, his cannon is pretty late. Look, we already have the Cybernetic score and the gas up. And he just now makes a cannon. But it is going to work out for him, I think. Like, there's not really an attack coming. There is Zergling speed on the way. More Zerglings being made now. But I think the Zerglings being made is based on the amount of Zealots. Normally, Protoss move out at four Zealots or five Zealots in this type of situation. 
Uh, Jean Hun is sitting back. I think he's just waiting for his cannon to finish. And we'll see if he puts any probes in the wall or what. But, uh, yeah, certainly we should see pressure pretty soon coming out of our Protoss player. Stargate on the way. And here we go. The five Zolots walk out. Uh, he was waiting just for one more. Oh, and he's going to send it to. Okay. Now, Zergling speed is almost done and more lings are being made. So let's see if Jedi's pulling his Zerglings back is going to be something that pays off. Is he going to be able to surround these and kill them right away? If he can eliminate these quickly, that's a huge advantage. Zolot's coming towards the ramp. Ooh, that's a lot of Zerglings, and he does get a very nice surround upon them. Jean Hun going to lose every single Zelot, and what info does he get other than there's a lot more Zerglings than he expected? Not a great moment here for Jean Hun, trying to get this other Zelot back into a more cost-efficient location, but really all this is doing is slowing Jedi ever so slightly. Now, Jedi back at home has a single cannon. There's... A lot of lings, but I don't think he's going to try to bust the gateway or anything. That seems a little bit inefficient right now. In the meantime, he has a macro hatch going up at his third base, one in front of his natural as well. So going into five hatchery, asset spire is going to be finishing up. Plus one attack is on the way. Plus one air just getting started as the first Corsair goes across the map. Second gateway. We'll see. Legs should start. There it is. see what this Corsair gets done. It, of course, saw the Spire, so it knows that Scourge should be popping out here shortly. Maybe he can get one Overlord. By the way, Hydralis Den being made at that third base. Very important to note. Oh, I think he is just going to get it. Okay. Gets it, and Scourge going to be popping out. Corsair turns around, starts to run home. Very importantly, you got to keep that thing alive. Back home, just two Zolots at a time. Templar Archives. Defensive cannon near the Stargate. Always important. You don't want Scourge to be able to babysit that looking for Corsair kills. See, they're coming in. <laughs> and they're going to see the cannon. See how they go to the Stargate? They just they want to just catch a Corsair as it pops out. <laughs> but a well-placed cannon. So Jean Hun not taking any of that. Looking really good. Uh, despite the fact that he lost all those all those Zelots. Like, he blocked the original Lings pretty well. He did lose all the Zealots, but he's he's blocked everything else so far. Templar Archives is finishing up. Let's take a look over at Jedi's side. Okay, so he's getting up to 30 drones once again, which is where he kind of peaked in the last game. A lot of Hydra's being produced. Overlord Speed is on the way. Uh, Hydra's Speed as well as plus one ranged attack. So is this just, like, Jedi's build where he goes into 30 drones and just pumps five hatch hydra right now it's looking that way we're, we're seeing a little bit of a pattern emerge here against john Hood. but that might be something that can work out here now his sim city is pretty strong these zealots do not want to screw with that right now they might try to check out this third base the sim city is pretty good there too got to be careful you don't want to lose those storm has been started but, you know, something we do see occasionally is Zerg try to hit right before Storm is done. Because that'll be the weakest moment, right? Like, that that's that's the moment that, you know, Jean Hun will be sitting here just hoping that nothing happens to him. Now, look at this. A big... Oh, wow, that's a big surround on those Zealots. Uh, the Zealots mostly get away, but a lot of Zerg units out here. This is a pretty big army off 30 drones, so... Looks like he is going to try to force the Corsairs away. Corsair is trying to keep him busy. The Zealot's still out on the map as well. And are we going to see an attack? Psystorm's still not done. A few more cannons being made. So we're going to have, well, not quite four at the front. He's trying to make a few more. I could see this doing some damage. Like, you, I could see this getting the forge. Let's see. Let's see. Storm not quite done. He's, he's going to have two storms the second it finishes. See if he can actually get in before that. Attacking. Oh, my God. He picks off that High Templar so, so quickly. Storm almost done. Oh, he loses the second High Templar. Oh, my God. Jedi with some killer instinct right there. 
getting in right before Storm is done, killing off two High Templars. The flanking Zealots come up. The cannons unable to really even warp in. The second one does get in, starts getting some hits. The Corsairs come back. Probes being pulled. Messiness absolutely everywhere. I would say that that was good for Jedi, though. Right? Like, he he forced a lot of pulling to happen. Yeah, he started, he's actually losing a lot of Overlords, which is certainly painful. You don't want a big supply block like that. So, nice counterplay from Jonhun, but to lose the two High Templars, his first two that have Storms on the way, that's really painful. All right, the Hydra's coming down now. Oh, yeah, keeping that pressure on. Microing back heavily. A DT slips out past everything. The Zalts, like, four extra ones dying for that uh, DT to get across. But we'll see if that pays off here for John Hun. He's definitely going to need some damage with that. He's only at 40 probes right now on two base against three. The Hydras continue to micro very strongly. Oh, God, the plus one armor would be a huge get here. And, in fact, he does bust it before that plus one armor finishes. Very, very painful for Jeanhun. Going to end up losing this gate, too, but that's not the biggest deal. Another storm almost ready. Oh, the DT does get picked off. He doesn't end up getting any drones there, unfortunately. Still some... Cor oh, the Corsair is doing some damage. Look at this. Supply blocked once again. He's having a really hard time ever getting over 55 supply here. Now, in the main base, we have a good five gates. The forge being remade. John Hun's still up in supply. Definitely a big part of that is the amount of supply blocks that he's caused. I think the Lurker Aspect upgrade just finished. And, by the way, a second forge is being made. Where is it? Oh, no, I'm sorry. I could have sworn I saw a second forge being made, but no, it's... Uh, this forge did die, and he remade into the main base. Robo is about halfway done, but the lurker contain is going to start. Jedi is in a very good position, I think. We have Dragoon Range just starting now, but you'd need more than just Dragoon Range. You need the Dragoon Range, and you need the Dragoons, and you need Observers out. And with the Overlord's speed already done, with this type of nice containment going up, just keeping the uh, Observers alive is going to be a little bit tricky. Of course, you're going to want to spread these lurkers so they're at least one size storm apart. You don't want size storms getting big value there. Very, very good spread. Ooh, this containment with a very Zot heavy army is so painful. So observatory needs to go up right now. Special cannons. Where is that observatory? There it is. Okay, so. A lot of hydras being pumped by Jedi. He's and look at the look at the drone count now. Now that he's gotten an edge, he drones up past where Jean Hun's at. He's on the three base. He's sending out a drone to make a fourth base as well. This is a pretty big advantage. First dragoons coming up. They don't have their range yet, and again, you need an observer. And he's actually moving this lurker now. He doesn't want one way up in the front that's going to get picked off easily. Also, uh, Jean Hun saw exactly where that was, and like you just memorize that, and then you can storm it and just kill it really, really quickly. Uh, so, pulls that back for now. A little group of hydras here. I think these are going to mostly be trying to snipe, just targeting out observers, or like if only a few dragoons come out, maybe a high templar. We'll see. A few scourge in here. These are the quickest way to kill an observer. Takes three dragoon hits to kill a scourge. So that's like. That's actually pretty difficult. They're not super high on AI uh, priority either. So we have... Is that Observer... Okay, that's Sight Range. That is very quick Observer Sight Range. I love it. I love Jean Hood. This guy was meant to be a Terran player. Like, look at this. I never see this. He's on two bases, and he's like, you know what I need to spend my gas on? Observer sight range, because he's going to be picking off my observers. What what a cool, cool, cool move to see. Like, you really don't see that that often, and it seems really smart. But obviously, you know, it's like 150 gas to upgrade, so that's the same as a High Templar. So you get one less High Templar if you get that, but two observers cost the same as a High Templar, right? So you gotta you got to factor this in. How many observers are we going to lose? 
Now the Scourge coming in. Ooh. Actually, all of them still alive. Observer's sight range is done. Look at that sight range. That's actually pretty crazy. <laughs> you can see really far back, keeping these observers so far back right now. Storm's going down. John Hun, is he going to be able to break out quickly? Another nice storm goes down as well. If he can get everything that's on the high ground, that's going to be huge for him. Nice storm on those lings. A lot more lurkers coming up. Jedi. My god, that is a that is a lot of lurkers that he has to deal with right now. Looks like a very poorly placed gate over here. Has to kill that off with dragoons to get them out. Moving forward. Oh, the Scourge coming up. They do end up picking off an Observer. Oh, a decent storm. A decent storm. It does force the Hydras not to come any closer. That one hits too. Very nice. Oh, that one actually missed this second Lurker, unfortunately. Hydra's coming forward to fight those uh, Dragoons once again. He really needs the Storms there. Oh, loses another Observer. Still has a couple, though. More Observers being made. John Hun, you can see his gas bank so, so low here. And some more Storms going to be going down. Storms all over these Lurkers. Oh, God. His, uh, his Observers were on attack move, and now he doesn't have any left over. He has to wait for the next one. That's painful. He actually had enough to break out of here. But he stormed his own observers. So painful once you put the money in to actually, uh, you know, have that observer sight range and then uh, accidentally attack, move them forward in a moment of passion while trying to break out of this containment. All right, the next one comes out. Can he still break? Don't forget, this fourth base is up. Very scary when your opponent has twice as many bases as you. Oh, man. The Lurker Spines are just endless here. Look at this. 13 Hydras at a time. John Hun pumping out what he can, but more damage coming down. Picks off yet another Observer. This containment from Jedi just looking a bit too strong. John Hun is forced into making a lot more Zealots at this point. It's just so hard to break out of. Some Dragoons, some Zealots, a High Templar here and there. And he still has to make more observers as well because they just keep getting picked off. By the way, guys, let me know in the comments, do you think that observer sight range, is that reasonable on two bases against this type of containment? It seemed good at the beginning, but here we are, and John Hun is not out of his base yet. <laughs> oh, man. All right, brings up another observer. Let's see if he can break out now. Oh, my God. Goes after that Observer once again. Gets it. So even if he... I mean, once you get the Observer, everything can just pull back as well. Moves up even with more of the Hydra Lurker. Pushes that Contain even closer, eating some of this Storm damage. But Jean-Hun has to step back. Wait for another one. Here we go. Another Observer is out. Jean-Hun just seeming to have no chance. Uh the mineral patch is just about gone at this point. Jedi, a bit too strong. Looks like he's going to tie it up one-to-one. -one. Can't imagine John Hun being in this game much longer. An important game here for Jedi. Wants to be able to win this group. Doesn't want to have to play another one. This containment looking way too strong to break out of. The supply eclipsing what Jean Hun has at this point. Probably the last attempt from Jean Hun now. Like, you're you're out of mineral patches. Like he can he has to spend all of his money on a new Nexus once he breaks out, and then he can't hold whatever comes next. So this is gonna be GG. Yeah. No, there's there's just there's no breaking out at this point. Jedi with an excellently played game here. Taking down John Hun. Gonna tie this series up. And I mean, I know that John Hun knows this as he's got 52 and then four. Okay, so GG.